are we? We are the ones who step up for each other. I've got your back. You've got mine. Kindness, humility, empathy. It's not just talk. It's who we are. It's who we always have been. And no one can take that from us. The movement to bring it back, it started here. And here. And here. In school gymnasiums, community centers, the living room down the block. You'll be where? Okay, we'll be there. Who are we? We're the movement that will beat Donald Trump. Welcome. We're going to have to sweat for it. We're going to have to sacrifice and fight. We're going to have to lead. Everyone is going to have to lead with kindness, humility, empathy, and not just talk, but action. Action today, action tomorrow. Action until we win. And we will win if we do this together. It's who we are. It's who we always have been. Now let's show them. Thank you for joining the Biden for President Grassroots Supporter Summit with campaign manager Jen O'Malley Dillon. Now, please welcome Biden for President Senior Advisor Simone Sanders. Greetings, everyone. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome to our Grassroots Strategy Summit. My name is Simone Sanders. I have the pleasure of being your moderator today, and we're going to get started shortly. Didn't you love that video? I, it's my favorite one, so I'm very happy that we played it today. Just so you guys know, we are going to be taking questions live today, a Q&A live, using the interactive chat tool uh, on our page. So if you want to go in there and insert a question, just visit the events page on our website. While you're there, uh, you can fill out our strategy survey. And you can also chip in $5 so we can keep making videos like the ones you saw at the top of this program. We are very, very excited to do this with you today. You know, grassroots folks like yourselves powered our campaign. You pushed us through the primary and you've gotten us to where we are today. And that's why we're so excited to share our strategy with you. But I'm not the person you came to see. I am very, very, very elated to introduce our fearless leader, our super amazing campaign manager, uh, the lady that I look up to, Jen O'Malley Dillon. Come on in here, Jen. Hi, Simone. Hey, everyone. This is so awesome. I am so glad to be part of this. And I am so excited, Simone, for the questions that we're going to get throughout this, this uh, presentation. So when I was thinking about the campaign, and as I think about myself, the first thing I would say is that I'm an organizer. And there's nothing more important to this campaign to the vice president than all of you. And so as we look to the general election and we look to our plan and our program, we are looking to all of you and we wanted to bring you in on some of the planning we've been doing, some of the work that we've been engaged on and how we're thinking about the general election. And we can't wait to talk through this with you today and also get your questions throughout. So let's get going. You can't start a campaign without a candidate. And boy, do we have a candidate. I am so proud to work for the vice president. I could not imagine a better candidate than Vice President Joe Biden for this moment that this country finds itself in. Whether it was the primary and the months and months that we all worked together uh, to be able to uh, engage uh, across all of the progressive movement and across our party to as we look to what we have in front of us with Donald Trump, um, there has not been one moment where Joe Biden has ever wavered in who he believes, what he believes, who he is fighting for. Um, he is someone who has an exceptional career. He is someone who has always put people first. And I think that's really what we found voters are looking for. They're looking for steady leadership. They're looking for experience. They're looking for empathy and compassion. And could there be a more important um, characteristic at this moment than that? And what we as a country are looking for from each other and from our leader. Um, and that is something that has not only been Vice President Biden's argument since the day he entered the race, it's been who he is his entire life. Uh, and I don't think there's someone more equipped for this moment that we're facing and the leadership that we need to bring our country back together. 
From day one, our message has been incredibly clear. It's going to continue to be incredibly clear. When Joe Biden launched his campaign, he talked about restoring the soul of America. As we all live through what's happening right now with COVID, he has said over and over again, and I think we can all share, that we are seeing the soul of America in action. And that is something that is so powerful. Um, and that is something that's going to be uh, an element we all are going to have to pull from to unify America, to unify this country, help it heal and help it build back up again, rebuilding the backbone of this country. There has certainly been no time uh, in, in uh, maybe forever, but certainly in, in recent memory where uh, rebuilding the backbone of this country has taken on greater urgency. It's more important than ever with the public health crisis we're facing, the economic crisis we're facing, and the need for our leaders to be understanding exactly what this country, the middle class, the working class are going through and how we rebuild and we rebuild better uh, for the future. We wouldn't be here today without all of you. We, we wouldn't be uh, here at this amazing grassroots strategy summit. We wouldn't be here as the nominee um, without you powering us to victory. So let's talk about what we've done together. You are our most powerful tool. You are our voices. Maybe you've been with the vice president from the very beginning, from day one, or maybe even before that. Um, maybe you're just joining us today, or perhaps you were with somebody else uh, in the primary and you've just come on board in the last few months, or maybe you're not completely there yet, but uh, you're tuned in to listen today because you're getting uh, you know, hyper-focused on the task ahead. You are all welcome here. This campaign is for all of us because it's going to take all of us to defeat Donald Trump and bring our country back. But so much has already been done that you all have led and been a part of on this campaign. We are so proud of the grassroots support that we have. 97% of all of our donations have come through grassroots donations. 87% of our donors have given less than $200. And our average digital donation is $29. That's just the money side, which is obviously incredibly important. And we wouldn't be able to do the work we we do day in and day out without uh, financial support and your support. But on top of that, over the countless primaries, hundreds of thousands of supporters and volunteers have made millions of calls, have outreached all across this country to be able to really power the work, to be the voice of this campaign, to amplify our message, to speak to who Vice President Joe Biden is. And we're going to need you more now than ever as we look to the general election. So what, what have we done together? What have we won so far? Well, it's pretty impressive when you look at it. We have built a winning coalition. We have increased our support across every main audience that we're focused on, winning 54% uh, with primary voters age 65 and older, 55 with African Americans. You look across the board at the core constituencies that are going to make up our pathway to victory in the general election. And we have built that winning coalition because it's going to take a coalition to do that. And we'll talk a little bit more down the line on that. We have also generated incredibly high turnout in these key states. The turnout we have seen has been record breaking. And I think that's a testament to who the vice president is and also what's at stake. We've been able to beat, um, you know, incredible candidates and those candidates, you know, they, they nearly, they outspent us nearly 20 to one, which is uh, pretty amazing. Um, they are the best candidates that we have ever put forth as a party in, in totality. And we're so proud that we have been able to consolidate support across the party, doing that earlier uh, than, than most candidates have ever been able to do. And not only have we earned those endorsements, but I am so proud to say that these candidates are working with us side by side, both doing work together, joint events, uh, also doing all the outreach to their own networks and their own supporters. So um, it is going to take us doing this together. And we've been able to really consolidate our party and be laser focused on the task ahead. Okay, so let's get into it. The most important thing, what are we doing here? Well, we're talking about our path to victory on November 3rd. So there's four things I'm going to talk to you about today. Uh, the first is the map. We believe it favors the vice president. Let's break it down. The second is our candidate. He is strong and so is our message. So we'll dig into that a little bit more. 
our campaign, the work we've been doing over the course of the last several months and, and well before then, it has the resources and the organization to win. So we'll talk to you about that. And then obviously everyone is interested. How do you, how do you build a campaign in this time of COVID? Well, we're gonna talk about that, meeting people online and off so that together we're able to carry us all to victory in November. So let's start with a map. The map favors the vice president. Now, uh, my staff know that I could talk about the map all day, and we are, uh, we're not going to do that, uh, but we'll tell you a little bit about how we're approaching the map. So our goal is to win 270 electoral votes in November. And that's something that means that we have to put a number of states in play. As we think about the map, we think that we will have a very expansive battleground state map. Uh, in 2020 and in this election. We start with the states that we have to protect. Those are the states you can see in navy blue, um, the Nevadas and Minnesotas uh, of the world. Those states are states that we won in 2016 that we know are critical to our winning coalition in November. Those states aren't safe. They're not states that we're not gonna do anything in. They are only going to be part of our winning coalition if we do the work to ensure that they will be. And so we're gonna be laser focused on these protect states. We then have to go win back a number of states. So those are the states in light blue. These are the swing states that Democrats won in 2008. They won them in 2012, but we didn't win them in 2016. Now, we don't have to win all of those states, but we have to win a good number of them, two, three, four, depending on the size of the state, to ensure that we get to 270 electoral votes. We also have real opportunity to expand the map this November. I'm so excited about this. States like Arizona and Texas and Georgia are in play in a very real way for the first time ever. I know that we can win these states. If you look at Arizona in particular, and the staff kids me a little bit because I talk about Arizona a lot, um, because Arizona is a true battleground state for the first time ever. This is a state that not only is prime for uh, our work and our effort because the foundation has been led over the last several years as we continue to grow and support there, but it is a state that has a tremendous a uh, statewide candidate and Mark Kelly had a strong candidate last cycle and Senator Sinema. And we've been able to build off of that foundation. We're really looking forward to, to working together there. But that paints a picture of a pretty strong, expansive map for us to get to 270 electoral votes. So I'm sure you're asking, how are we doing in some of these states? Well, I'm glad you asked because we're doing well uh, and we're doing well. Um, we can't take that for granted. We're doing well right now. As everyone knows, polling is not the be all and the end all as we have seen time and again. Uh, it is also only a snapshot in time. So this reflects the latest polling that we have on how we're doing in these core five battleground states. They are the swing and expansive states that we were just talking about. We are ahead in Florida, in Pennsylvania, in Michigan, in Wisconsin, in Arizona. Now, I would love to win all of these states, but we don't have to win all of these states in order to win 270 electoral votes. We just need to win two or three of them in order to take us over the top. But I also know, even though we're pulling ahead now, we cannot take that for granted. We can't sit back and assume that we're going to maintain these numbers because I assure you we will not. There is so much uncertainty in what's happening in this country right now. There is so much uncertainty uh, in general. And we have a pretty polarized electorate across the country, as we well know. These states are perennially, they are battleground states. They're going to require us to work incredibly hard to turn out our vote, to bring on our supporters, and to expand our electorate. But as we stand today, we are in a strong place, and we are building the plan to make sure that we maintain that. So how do we do that? How do we make sure that we maintain that support and we grow it? Well, we build the Biden coalition. The Biden coalition is what took us through the primaries. It is going to be what's going to take us to victory on November 3rd. That coalition is going to pull from every type of voter across the country. We do not have to make choices. We shall never make choices to just focus on one group of voters or another or take one group of voters for granted because people believe another group of voters is more important. 
In order for us to build that Biden coalition, we actually have to win across the board. When we look at young voters, when we look at African-American and Latinx voters, these are voters that are at the heart of soul of today and our future. And we need to make sure that they are turning out in high rates. We certainly saw an increased turnout in 2018. We saw it again in 2020 in the primary states before uh, the virus hit, and we expect to see higher turnout in 2020. But that is only gonna happen if we work together, we make sure that we're having real conversations in those communities and talking to young people and we're giving them a voice in our campaign and empowering them to lead. This is a hyper important priority for this campaign. We also need to make sure that we're continuing to talk to suburban voters, college educated and women voters. These are folks that have grown more supportive of Democrats since 2012, but we can't take them for granted. We can't assume that they're gonna be with us. In 2018, some of these voters allowed us to be able to move 38 of the 43 congressional districts that were flipped by Democrats they were in suburban districts. So that is a real opportunity for us as Democrats. Uh, we know that we'll get to the heart of where some of Donald Trump's support came from. Um, and we've got to do the work to continue to continue to ensure that their support stays with us. Then you look at disaffected voters, and this is this crosses almost every type of voter in the country, really. We have so much work that we need to do to make sure that voters, whether they're um, non-college voters, whether they're blue collar workers, African-American men, Latinx voters, Obama Trump voters, these are the voters who have grown less supportive of Democrats since 2012. And we have to do the work to win them back. We have to do that work by showing up having the conversations, engaging on the issues, and reminding people what's at stake. We believe that Vice President Joe Biden is uniquely qualified to be able to reach these voters, bring them into our fold, and engage them and empower them to vote in 2020 and November 3rd. So this is what our coalition is going to look like. I assure you, we expect this to be a winning coalition, but only if we do the work together. So I think let's take a minute here and bring Simone back because I believe she's been getting some questions for us. And I know you don't want to listen to me just talk this whole time. We've so, got um, questions, Jen. No, okay. Jen, I thought this was a very engaging presentation. Now, let me just say kudos for the coalition. This is what it's <laughs> going to take to restore the soul of the nation and beat Trump. We do have a question. I do believe our first question comes from uh, a viewer in New Jersey. Do we have the question? <laughs> here we go. This question. Uh, comes from Gurner Tucker in from New Jersey. The question is, how do you see the national campaign's role in helping us win down ballot races for not only Senate and House, but also state legislatures? Jen, I know this is right up your alley. Let's tell the people. All right. I, well, I love that this is the first question. I love that people are thinking about this and caring about this. Here's what I believe. We are going to win the White House. It will not be enough if Vice President Joe Biden is standing there alone. We need to win the Senate. We need to make sure we make greater gains in the House. And then we need to win on the ground in state legislatures across this country. There are so many amazing candidates that have stood up, that have been running, that have been winning. And the only way for us to do that is to work together in partnership with each other. So while we obviously have to be very focused on our path to victory through the battleground states, we are also going to be working very closely in each one of those states to partner with state electeds, to partner with great candidates that are running across the state, but in districts uh, up and down the ballot. We're going to volunteer together. We're going to campaign together. We're going to show up together. And you know why? That's because we need it. But because Joe Biden has spent his entire career not just fighting for himself and, and his district, but cr crisscrossing this country, fighting for, campaigning with, partnering with candidates, every part of their career. And that's the heart of who he is, but that's gonna make us successful if we do that together. So that's the exact right question and the exact thing we're gonna be doing in battleground states and then beyond, because we're gonna have people across all 50 states and seven territories. And in every place where we have people, we're gonna do the work. Do the work. I love it, Jen. I mean, I, I know I can't wait to get out there and knock some proverbial doors. Uh, for down ballot candidates. I'm excited. So I'm going to keep sourcing more questions and I'll let you get back to the presentation. All right. Thanks, Simone. That was awesome. Keep getting them. 
Okay, let's get back to it. So I told you we're gonna talk about our candidate. Uh, he is strong and so is our message. Well, what does that mean? So let's get into it. Joe Biden is the right leader for this moment. So, you know, as we were just talking about in state by state polls, we're feeling good about that, but we are also feeling good about our national lead, nine points in the latest poll that continues to trend uh, as we have been seeing over the course of, well, frankly, through the primary and into the general election as well. So why is that? Why are we ahead right now? Why is he the right leader for the moment? Well, again, I'm glad I'm asking myself these questions and then I can tell you about it um, because he's got the experience to lead lead a recovery and be ready on day one. 51% of people believe that Joe Biden has the experience our country needs in a president during the crisis. And that's not because they're just saying, oh yeah, you know, maybe he seems like he should be the leader. It's because he's done it. And that's something that we have a really important story to tell. Joe Biden led this country already through a recovery in the early days of the Obama-Biden administration. He was tasked with so many significant elements of that recovery crossing the state, working across industry, making sure that we were bringing our country back from an economic brink. Unfortunately, the economic brink that we're going to have to bring our country back from is going to be even more severe than what the Obama-Biden administration was facing in those first years in office. But he knows how to do this work, and the American people know that as well. And we have a lot of work to do to reinforce that experience, but to remind people that he is ready on day one. And that is something that is going to be so important here. He's also a champion for the working class. 57% of Americans believe that the vice president would handle helping the middle class better than Donald Trump is. 59% believe Vice President Joe Biden cares about average Americans. I know every day, I am like all of you when you maybe watch the news or you think about what's going on in your own lives, um, that it is hard to see and believe that this country is where it is right now, from a virus that's ravaged every one of us in some way, shape, or form to the economic situation we find ourselves in. But as we look to the kind of leadership that we need in order to bring our country back and to ensure that that country is reflecting the workers and the people of this country, it is Joe Biden who is the one that American people believe is not only uh, the best to lead us through this crisis, but also cares about average Americans, cares about the middle class, uh, and is going to be fighting for them. And that's a really critical part of our message to make that clear. Finally, who will bring the nation together? 55% of this country believe the vice president can help heal and unify this nation. I think you see that in everything that you see about who the vice president is, what he's gone through in his personal life, what he has gone through in his professional life, the moments that he's been challenged with and how he has always brought people together, how he's always been able to connect to them. That is what we're going to need to unify this country. And that is what voters are looking for. So I want to uh, take you to something that really, I think, helps uh, show that leadership from the vice president, but also the, the difference, the difference in who we have right now and what we can have if we have uh, Vice President Joe Biden as president. This is an incredibly powerful video we're about to show you that I'm so proud that the team put together. We put out earlier this week. So let's take a look. Why don't you act in a little more positive? Don't be threatening. Be nice. I'm the president and you're fake news. They're not able to fill the beds. They needed two hospitals. We built one, it was perfect. I said that you're a terrible reporter, that's what I said. I'd read it at 10. I think we've done a great job. I've yeah. heard that they are loaded up with gowns now. You know, we're not a shipping clerk. You know, it's a two-way street. They have to treat us well also. How are you doing, for real? I'm tired. I'm, I'm scared every day. My job is to go to work and help people who are sick. You go in and risk your life every day. God love you. If there are any angels in heaven, they're all ICU nurses.
That one just gets me every time. Um, the second part of that ad is is a real conversation that the vice president was having. Um, and he has conversations with real people every single day, um, whether they're on the front lines, whether they're just someone, you know, putting one foot in front of the other. And and I can assure you that that is the real Joe Biden. That is the the most critical part of of um, the work we do on this campaign is to put real people front and center and to make sure that he is staying close to what's happening to everyone in this country so he can reflect that in his leadership and the vision he has for this country um, and, and just such a powerful way to see that in contrast. So this election is a referendum on Donald Trump. We believe that. 56% of people disapprove of the way that Donald Trump is handling his job as president. I think that that is abundantly clear, but the majority of this country uh, thinks so as well. So as we think about setting up that referendum on Trump, we're looking at it in four different buckets. Um, and the first is that he's just not up for the job. Only 41% of people approve the job Donald Trump is doing. That's really powerful number. It's powerful because he is an incumbent. So typically uh, incumbents are positioned much greater than that. And he is also leading during a national crisis. And typically the country would unite around a leader during a, a time of crisis. But the majority of this country just does not believe he's up for the job. You can see that uh, in terms of uh, the fact that our unemployment rates are so high, the highest it's been since the Great Depression. Uh, and everyone is feeling that impact. Everyone is understanding that if Donald Trump and his administration had led better, we would not be in such dire straits as we are today. He is failing to lead in the COVID-19 crisis. 62% believe that Trump did not take the threat of coronavirus seriously enough. 51% believe Trump's response to the crisis has been a failure. It's not hard to look around um, to see that that's the truth. And that's not, you know, as, as Vice President Biden says all the time, it is not the fault of Donald Trump that we have coronavirus. But the fact that his administration did not act sooner, sooner even when Vice President Biden was urging him forward to, um, we would not be in such rough straits right now. And the country is aware of that and places that blame in his feet. He is not fighting for the working class. Only 38% of voters believe that Trump will better hand will um, better handle helping the middle class. That's a bit of a tongue twister. Um, they uh, only 31% believe Trump's policies are favoring the middle and working class voters the most. 49% of voters disapprove of Trump's handling of the economy. So what does that say? It says that they just don't believe that he's looking out for them. They don't look, they don't believe that he's looking out to fight for them. And they can see that every day in the priorities of who he is leading for and the decisions he's making. And that has led us into what we would call a corrupt recovery. 73% of Americans have serious concerns um, that the money uh, from COVID going to small businesses, it's not going to small businesses. It's going to the big corporations that don't need it. Those are the people that, you know, Donald Trump's looking out for. 62% have serious concerns that Trump has used a relief bill to hand out perks to campaign donors. So again, as we think about, and we said from the very beginning of this presentation, people know who Vice President Joe Biden is. They know what he believes and who he's going to fight for. Uh, I think they know that about Donald Trump as well. And they know that Donald Trump is not fighting for them. And we're seeing that across the board. And that's really laddering up to uh, a lack of uh, belief in his leadership and a significant uh, number of voters, a majority of voters believing that he's not doing a good job as president. And that's what we're going to focus on in this election. All right. So let's bring Simone back here for some more questions. Thanks, Jen. Um, I, I absolutely am so glad that we are getting to chat about the realities, what's happening in the coronavirus and the pandemic and the lack of leadership from the White House, because it's a key part of our strategy that we talk about all the time. So we've gotten more questions from our interactive live page. Again, if you'd like to submit a question, go to our events section on our website. And let's take our next question. And it comes from Will Coon from Laurel, Maryland. Here's Will's question. 
Will says, I would like to know how I can help the campaign in a blue state. What can I do from afar that will have a real impact on the election, particularly in swing states? Jen, I think this is an amazing question. You know, you're an organizing guru. What can people do if they live in a blue state? You know, let's just dis dispel the myth that just because they live in a blue state, they don't matter. But what can they do? Oh, that you are so right that everyone has a role to play in this election. So first of all, I will say is if you think about your friends, you might live in Maryland, but you probably know people all across the country. You probably know people, you probably have family members that maybe they were uh, Trump supporters before. Um, have a conversation with them. Obviously talking politics can always be tough, but there's too much at stake to not have the hard conversations. And we know that your voice is so much more powerful to people in your own networks than anyone else. You're a trusted source. And in this day and age where people are uncertain where information's coming from, uh, you know, your, your voice has so much power. So that's number one. Number two, we are talking to people all over this country and we need help doing that. Whether it's from your home, getting on the phone and calling people in, in battleground states, maybe where the race is gonna be a little bit closer. Um, maybe it's getting online and amplifying content from the campaign that you see like, oh, that was a great video, making sure you're putting that out there. Um, there are so many ways to plug in. We're gonna talk a little bit more about this towards the end, but I can assure you there's work to be done. And the last thing I'll say is in Maryland, there's a lot of great races too. So don't don't forget, right at home, even if you're in a blue state, there's work to be done to make sure that, especially in this election, that is going to be a little bit different. It, not a little, a lot different, right? This is unprecedented times. So people are going to need to be reminded about the election, about what's at stake, about what kind of races folks are running, because maybe some of the traditional ways they have engaged with campaigns in the past might not exist in the same way. So there is a lot of work to be done, right? been home where you are, but across the country, even from your own home. No, oh, I'm sure Will appreciates that, Jen. Uh, that really reminds me that I think I need to fill out my mail-in ballot for the election that's coming, the primary election that's still coming up where I live in Washington, D.C. Well, I'm going to go back to grab more questions. I'll let y'all get back to it. Keep sending your questions in, folks. I've got my phone right here, and I'm sourcing them. Thanks. Thanks, Simone. All right. So let's talk about what we've been up to these last several weeks and, and um, months as we've been building the campaign. We have a campaign that's going to have the resources and the organization to win. So how do we build this campaign and build it to scale while operating in what we call this new normal? Well, let me tell you about it. So first of all, we are scaling our campaign um, across the board. We're hiring senior hires. Um, you've probably seen a few announcements. We have some really exciting senior hire announcements coming up that I'm so uh, excited to share with everyone and roll out this week. Um, we are so focused on hiring diverse leadership across the campaign uh, and across every aspect of what we're doing. We are doubling uh, our digital team. We've already done that. We're growing it even further. We're really prioritizing our hires to make sure that we're expanding our video, our content, and our platform capabilities. And as you can see, we're doing things like this awesome summit that has this interactivity. Uh, and you're just going to continue to see more and more from, from us on that. We are also going to be hiring up leadership in all of our battleground states in June. So we are uh, working now. We've been working in concert, as I've been saying, with our other campaigns that are on the ground already. Um, but we're going to have a state operation with our teams focused on the work of the states uh, that we're going to be building out and talking more about as we head into June. We're really excited about that. We're also leveraging the collective strength of our national and state parties. Partnership here is the key. Um, and we are so unified and ready for that partnership. And we've been hard at work on that. We established the Biden Victory Fund several weeks ago. This allows us to maximize our deployment across the campaign and in our states. We're collaborating in any way we can on our strategies, um, on our way to virtually organize, uh, looking at sharing resources. And as we just talked about, um, supporting candidates up and down the, the ballot. I'm proud to say that we will have over 600 organizers uh, responsible for battleground states that will be on board in June. They are going to be working across our battleground states. They're going to be organizing virtually. 
They're going to be organizing uh, digitally. And when the time is right, they'll be organizing on the ground and in person. We are not going to be in a situation where we will put any of our team, any of our staff, any of our volunteers in harm's way. So we will not go out into battleground stents and uh, states in a physical sense until uh, the medical guidelines allow us to do that. And it might mean we do that in some sooner than others, depending on where we are. Virus, but we do it day soon because our health, your health, the health of all of our volunteers is so much more than anything else. And, and we'll talk about this in a minute, we're doing the work now. So while it doesn't feel and look exactly like we've done before, um, the impact of our conversations has just been tremendous uh, in our engagement. So there's so much work to be done. Really excited for this growth of our team. Um, finally, I just want to highlight that our fundraising has been strong and it's still growing. I, like all of you, wish that money wasn't such a big part of uh, campaigns, um, but it is, and we need the resources to ensure that we're able to do the work in front of us. This is an unprecedented election. It is going to take uh, an impress unprecedented amount of support to build what we need here, especially when we're up against Donald Trump. We are behind in fundraising to him, obviously, as you would expect to an incumbent who has a lot of resources in the bank, but we are catching up. We beat them in fundraising in March. We only came a million dollars short in April, um, and we're really proud of that work. And we know that we see the pathway to continue to, to grow that and to make sure that we have the resources it's going to take for our path to victory. All right. So... We're in this unprecedented time. Um, you know, the world's kind of turned upside down. And, you know, as a campaign, we're obviously trying to figure out what that means for us as we're all living through it at the same time. And the key, the success, the way we're going to do this going forward is to meet people where they are, wherever they are. Sometimes that's going to be offline. Sometimes that's going to be online. But as we set out to think about our engagement, we have set out a series of core principles for that engagement that helps us in this new normal. Um, those core principles are driving everything we're doing. So what that looks like to us is that first and foremost, we've got to always articulate what's at stake. This one's for all the marbles. There is never going to be our country again in the way we have grown up in it or lived in it or believe it should be because it's not yet lived up to it if we don't get Donald Trump out of office. We need to define that choice for voters. We need to make it simple and clear, and we need to do that in a critical way with our messaging and our organizing. We need to make sure that we are always leading with empathy and putting voters at the center. I talked about that already in terms of Vice President Biden and how he's lived his life and how he's led this campaign must do the same. We must build community and connection. So many of us are isolated in ways that we haven't ever been before. So how do we help recreate that community and that connection that all of us are looking for and do that in service of the campaign? We need to give people an outlet to take action. We have found that there is so much that's happening right now that feels out of control, that people aren't able to do the things that they would normally do, to be able to uh, feel like they have an impact or a role to play when this world is in such a crisis. Well, this campaign and the actions that people can take as part of it give that outlet. And finally, we need to ensure that every voter can exercise their rights. Um, this is not not, this is important in every single election, every single one, but so much local and crew time around and we are hyper-focused on. We are underway campaigning virtually every single day and I have really been amazed at how well we've been able to do and how much reach and connection we've had across uh, all of our virtual campaigning, whether it is uh, virtual events that we're having with Vice President Biden or Dr. Biden, whether it's um, targeted that we're doing uh, uh, town halls with YouTubers to reach their audiences. Uh, we even had virtual lines. If you've been in an event with uh, Vice President Biden, you know uh, how much he loves rope line. Having that time, even if just for minutes with an individual, to that connection, that's so important. So 
replicated that in a virtual sense. Um, we've we've rolled out a, a podcast that um, I think we just have a, you know a, a new episode that just came out. Uh, we're you're going to see that regularly and such great guests there. We have just started over the course of the last couple of weeks uh, traveling. Uh, two battleground states. We were doing it virtually, but it is amazing. Uh, we've been able to do rallies, local news hits, um, to, to talk to local news uh, stations. We've done tours. Um, even though we're not physically there, how do we make that connection and see what people are going through? Um, local roundtables in different communities. So, of course, it's not going to make up for being in person with people in the same way, but we are so uh, impressed and proud of the connections that we'll to make as we do that. And we're going to continue to do that every, uh, every single um, week that we're out there. And then you guys, you're all helping us carry the vice president's message out there, participating in things like Soul of the Nation Saturday. I was so proud of that. Our first national organizing day where we weren't doing it to do something overtly political. We were bringing people together to build community. We are bringing people together um, to just say thank you in big and small ways. And that's something you're going to see us do day after day campaign because it's the true essence of who the vice president is. So as we think about what we're trying to do, we take nothing for granted. You heard me earlier say our polling's ahead. We're proud of that. Um, but we have to earn every single vote. If you've been here from day one, we still need to earn your vote. If you're just coming here or you're not even sure um, if you want to take any action with us, uh, we're going to earn your support and that we hope we're going to earn um, a, a part in your life where you feel like, you know what, there's so much at stake uh, that I'm going to stand side by side with Vice President Biden in order to do that. So how do we how do we do that? How do we earn every vote? Well, we first, we're going to build a custom approach in every state. What that means is no state is the same. No type of voter is the same. There, there's no monolithic groups here. What we are going to do is build our campaigns, customize to the people we're trying to reach and the communities we're trying to reach them. And it's going to reflect the uniqueness of the people of this country and our campaign is built around that. We're going to grow our tools and platforms to allow us to engage in a virtual way. Um, be on the lookout for a new website. We're really excited to roll out. You're seeing some of our new live streaming uh, platform capabilities now and we're going to continue to grow. Um, we're going to continue to really focus on this to make it easier for all of you to be part of this campaign and to do the work of outreach uh, in your own lives. We're gonna do community capacity. This is so important uh, as we think about the campaign. We often say you come for the candidate, but you stay for the people, the relationships, and sense of faith. Um, doing this work over 20 years, and there is nothing more, more than people in some kind of um, together you know you can't do it alone you know what's at stake you know you have a real role in avoiding that and that's the community that we're going to work to build and really prioritize we're doing that with our strategic coalition programming we've talked about this before we can take no communities for granted we need to ensure that we are building smart strategic programming now we're not waiting until GOTV we're not waiting until um, some point down the road to engage with core constituencies, that we're building opportunities for people to be part of the campaign based on how they identify how they want to participate. And that is so essential to what we're trying to build. And we're going to be protecting the election. We're going to make sure that we do everything possible in this campaign to ensure people have the right to vote. We know as we look to places like Wisconsin, where uh, many were trying to sow chaos when it comes to voting, we cannot allow that to happen. We need to do everything we can to ensure we have maximum opportunities for voting. That includes voting by mail, certainly, but that's not going to reach everyone. We also have to make sure there are safe ways for people to vote in person. And we need to be in partnership with that. We need to make sure we have education programs uh, that do the work to ensure folks know how to vote and how to do it safely. Finally, we need to make sure that we are amplifying the amazing surrogates that we're going to have across the campaign. I don't know about you, but I am pretty excited about our uh, potential running mate who we'll be announcing later in the cycle. Um, but we also have candidates uh, across that run for president. We have former candidates. We have um, community leaders. We have each one of you. 
There is no shortage of opportunity to be a voice for this campaign and amplify what's at stake, telling your story, telling why you're taking action, telling why you're showing up here and why we need to vote. That has power. And we are going to make sure that we give you the tools and resources you need to get that um, word out there in your own ways. And, and I just can't state that importance of that enough. All right, this, I often um, feel like this is uh, Joe Biden, uh, the only person that could build a digital campaign with heart and prioritize it like this is, is Vice President Biden, because we are, as a campaign, a reflection of who he is, which is a good man, a great leader, a man with so much empathy and heart. And so as we think about the digital campaign we're building, we're focused on audience-driven content, a high volume of social-first content. We are not looking to build content uh, for one medium and then dumping it on another. We're going to make sure that it is platform focused. It's audience specific. Uh, we're driving it across the campaign and we're bringing in the ideas and creativity of people within the political world and without uh, outside of it and, and any industry that has real ideas of how to drive this forward. We're using that content to build online communities and drive action whether it is some of the amazing stuff that we've already rolled out and we're working with many of you on. I love the content creator core. Um, you guys are just like amazingly talented and just doing this awesome stuff. And the, the creativity um, and the um, innovation that you're bringing to this campaign is just, it's so amazing. And so instead of keeping that on its own, we're saying, come on in, let's figure out how we can do that together. We are looking to organize a Facebook groups. So often we're building neighborhood team leaders. We're organizing in neighborhoods, right? That's sort of the standard organizing structure that we have. Well, um, why not do that for Facebook communities? Because that's where a lot of us are organizing now. So that's something that's really uh, a first time ever uh, for us this in 2020 and is going to have a real impact. Um, the Soul Squad, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but you know, making sure we're organizing our influencers so you get what you need to be able to be out there to amplify. How do we then take that action? We drive to action and we have action with empathy. Well, it's because it's centered around all of you and, and, and you are the heart of powering this campaign. Um, so we're gonna continue to do that and we are gonna continue to build up our digital capacity. We are already seeing that we're taking this engagement directly to Trump and it's working. We outspent Trump since March on Facebook and Google, something that you would only be doing if you were doing it well and your ROI was very positive, and, and it certainly is uh, for us. And since um, mid-March, we've had over 112 million organic video views. So we are really seeing some strong content and growth there. We've been able to double the size of our email list since Super Tuesday, which means that's a whole new group of people coming on board with us that we're engaging and building. Um, so we're just so excited about that growth that we're seeing. And we can't take any community for granted. So we need to make sure um, that we are doing the work to engage now with our core demographic and constituency groups. Um, whether uh, we're talking about African-Americans for Biden or, or military families for Biden or tech for Biden, um, we are building really uh, innovative, interesting, engaging communities and coalitions to bring everyone in and to create ways that we have really strong programming um, driven by research and advertising, uh, earned media. We'll be doing this on the ground. We'll be doing it nationally. We're going to have a lot to say on this in, in coming days. And this is just so critical for us to make sure we earn every vote and take no community for granted. All right, so Joe's campaign code. I love this thing so much. You know, this is an idea that Mayor Pete used in the primary and really helped reflect how we were going to, that Mayor Pete's campaign was going to organize. And we took that idea and we built it for the campaign in the general election, working in tandem with them. Um, this is Joe's campaign code, a list of things that I obviously believe, especially the no malarkey, uh, represent who the vice president is and represent who we are as a campaign. To be successful, a campaign needs to reflect its candidate and its essence in the, in the priorities and the philosophies and in uh, the core identity of who we are. And so as we think about our organizing and as we think about what we want to do, um, these 
campaign, this campaign code, these words, empathy, kindness, humility, joy. I, joy is so important. We need to have fun. I know it's hard to do, but finding joy in that connection with people uh, as part of this campaign is just so critical. Respect, inclusion, dignity. Um, those are the, co the, the elements of our campaign code. And I know you all reflect that every day in your own lives and as part of this campaign. So as I think about those words and I think about this campaign, I think about someone who is so special and so important to this campaign who wanted to ensure that she was able to be here. She knew we were doing this grassroots fundraiser and she wanted to share uh, her thanks with all of you. So please share a great welcome uh, with me for Dr. Jill Biden. Hi everyone. Thank you for all that you are doing for our campaign and for joining us today. You may not know that Joe's Senate career started with what experts considered an impossible race. He was just 29 years old and he wouldn't meet the legal age requirement to serve in the U.S. Senate until a month after the election. Joe was just a kid serving on the county council, running against a popular incumbent. And moreover, he was a Democrat in a Republican state. His campaign was laughed off and yet he won. Not because he was better funded or had a political machine. In fact, his campaign manager was a Senate rookie herself, his sister Valerie. No, they didn't have the money or political muscle, but they did go door to door. Val, his brothers, his mom. They licked envelopes and made phone calls. They talked to voters and did the seemingly impossible. Joe's career is built on a grassroots foundation. Every campaign we've ever run, from Senate reelections to our son Bo's campaign for Attorney General, to our road to the White House, has, at its heart, been about this. Knocking on doors, making phone calls, meeting in living rooms, having real conversations with real people. It's our family tradition, and now, you all are a part of that tradition as well. And with your help, I know we'll win. So thank you for your work. Thank you for your dedication. And thank you for your faith in us in this campaign and all of the good we'll do together. Ah, that I love Dr. Biden so much. Um, she just is such an amazing leader in her own right as a teacher. I'm the proud daughter of teachers myself, um, and I'm just so honored to to be able to work with her. And I'm so glad she was able to join us today. So let's let's just end this before we go to a few more questions. On on, I'm sure you're saying, "Wow, I've been wowed. I'm like totally in now. What can I do to help?" Well, here's what you can do to help. So let me give you three quick things you can do today. First, download the Team Joe app. Just go and text APP, text APT to 30330. This is our relational organizing app. We use fancy words nowadays. I'm an organizer. I talk about organizing, but we say things like relational organizing. All that means is this app is going to help you reach out to your friends, your family, uh, and engage them about the campaign and get exclusive updates from us and the team. So check it out. It's awesome. You're going to keep seeing more and more stuff from our app. Um, so make sure to sign up for it and uh, text app uh, as soon as you can. All right, next, join the Soul Squad. I love the Soul Squad. Um, as you guys know, and we've talked about this is about the soul of the nation. We are doing things Soul Saturdays, but it's really, this is the essence of who we are in this country, who we are in this campaign. If you join our Soul Squad, you're going to get weekly digital updates from the campaign. That's going to include photos, videos, um, online community highlights, and graphics to share. It's just a great place to stay ahead of everyone else and know all the things that we're pushing out there. Um, so go to joebiden.com backslash soul slash, oh, excuse me, dash squad uh, and check us out there. All right. And then get connected to an organizer. Oh God, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm like half, you know, um, thinking I should just do this so I can just keep talking to all of our organizers. These guys are so amazing guys and gals. Um, they are, uh, they are the heart and soul of everything that we do. Uh, and that is no, that is, it is always the truth. It is so much more, uh, in this campaign and this unprecedented times every week we do an all staff meeting. 
uh, and we bring the whole campaign together via Zoom and we talk about what's going on and we always have organizer highlights that share stories from the conversation they're having. Maybe that's um, the an event they've organized. Maybe that's just a person that they connected with and it is so powerful um, and amazing. So if you wanna get connected to an organizer, you wanna talk to them about ways to get involved in the campaign, Maybe you want to volunteer more. Maybe you live in a battleground state. Maybe you don't. Uh, maybe you want a job uh, and working with us. We want everyone to reach out. So go to joebiden.com um, slash connect. And that's where you can get connected to our organizer, which uh, I would highly recommend because they are amazing. Amazing, amazing. All right. I think we're going to more questions. Is that right? Simone, are you jumping back in with me? Ah! I'm back and I've got questions. Like magic, um, magic, magic. First of all, Jen, just, okay, I loved it. It was amazing. <laughs> you know, I've now seen you give this presentation about a hundred times and each time it feels like I'm just seeing it for the first time. So I'm so glad our, our grassroots friends got a chance to experience it. All right. So our next question um, is, a, is, is something that I'm sure is on the minds of lots of folks out there. And this question comes from Bonnie Binkler from Lincolnshire, Illinois. Okay, Bonnie. Uh, let's throw Bonnie's question up there. Bonnie's question is, the attacks from the Trump campaign will be unrelenting, vicious, and based on conspiracy theories and lies. What is the strategy to, counter, to counteract these attacks? I mean, we're already seeing these lies from the Trump campaign now, Jen. I feel like every day he comes up with something different to distract from the fact uh, that his lack of leadership help turn a public health crisis into an economic crisis. So, and by the he, I'm talking about Donald Trump. So, so tell the people a little bit about what we plan to do to counteract this. Yeah, uh, you're so right. And this is such an important question. And, and Simone um, knows this better than anyone. I mean, look, we know that Donald Trump knows that he's in trouble and that he is going to do whatever he can to deflect, to throw things out there, regardless of whether they have any truth to them in order to distract this country. That has been the thing he's done from day one. Uh, he's going to continue to do it. And he's never been faced with such a crisis like he's faced now. So we expect that. We are not going to let that go unanswered. We are gonna be aggressive and we're gonna push back, but we are not gonna let that take us off our own game plan. This Say it again, Jen. Say it again for the right. people in the back. We are not gonna let this take us off of our own game plan. The American people want a leader who is gonna lead this country forward, especially now. And they're looking to hear who we are and what we're for and what our administration is gonna look like, what Joe Biden's vision is for this country. And that's what we're gonna be talking about. And that is going to be in such stark contrast to Donald Trump and who he is and who he is as a leader. And if we can set up that choice, if we can make this a referendum on Donald Trump, which I believe we can, and we do not get distracted, but we don't allow things to go unanswered when they are completely inaccurate, um, then we are gonna do what we need to do here in this election. Does that sound right mm. to me? That sounds right to me. I mean, look, Donald Trump is scared. Uh, and that's where these attacks are coming from, guys. So that's why it's important that for folks like you, for our grassroots supporters who are building community online to ensure that you are helping elevate our content so that we can counteract a lot of this, just these lies that are happening out there uh, on the internet. But I feel good about it, Jen. I feel good that, you know, we're doing our part here. Yeah. Okay, our next question, let's see, let's see. Here we go. I think this is a good one, Jen. Our next question comes from John Harris from Boca, Raton, Florida. Oh, I know the weather is nice down in Florida right now. Thank you for the question, John. John's question is, how will the campaign work to encourage young voters, especially the Sanders, some Sanders supporters that didn't turn out in 2016? Uh, Jen, I think this is a good question. As you know, we prioritize young people. We've got some really amazing things that we'll be rolling out at the end of this month. But maybe you can tell folks a little bit about how young people are a key part of our coalition and what we'll be doing to ensure that everybody knows that, especially the young voters. Yes, that's a great question. I will first say I got the worst haircut of my life in Boca Raton, Florida. <laughs> uh, it was 20 years ago. I have not forgotten it. I, I Anyway. It's just well. I hope John. I hope John. It wasn't John. It wasn't John. <laughs> I hope John is getting better cuts. cuts than you were getting uh, back in the day. I know. I know. I, a fashion is not, you know, necessarily my thing. Nor was it what I came out of Florida with in 2020 after the recount um, or 2000. So that question is so critical. Um, you know, I think that for us, 
it is so important for us to talk more and more about the work we're doing with young people. Um, you know, one, their voice and leadership in the campaign. Hello, Simone. Um, Greetings, I'm a millennial. Top <laughs> leaders of our entire campaign, um, part of every strategic uh, decision and plan and strategy that we're making. Um, but also, we need to do uh, the work of ensuring young people are connected to our campaign. They know what we're doing. They know where we stand on issues. We're talking about issues that impact them. We understand that for millennial voters in particular, um, this crisis is just one of many that have covered their entire lives. And this is one that we have seen, we are seeing with what's happening with COVID, the systemic issues in this country that need to be resolved and remedied and that Joe Biden can lead us forward on. We need to talk about climate. We have a whole campaign plan within the campaign to drive uh, an incredibly powerful and robust discussion on our very progressive and strong climate plan, but also making sure that we're doing that um, with young people. Um, so there is nothing more important than us making sure that people understand who we are, how to be part of this campaign, but that we're doing the work of giving people, especially young people, a reason to participate, a voice and a, and a sense of empowerment so that everyone knows what's at stake, but they feel like they have a place and a home and a voice and leadership and that we are driving with shared values and we are focused on the things we need to do in this country um, for them and their lives and their future as much as for their today. So really incredibly important question, but such an important part of what we're building. Absolutely, everywhere we go. Jen, I think we have time for one other question. Let me... Let me see. Let me dig deep. There was lots of great engagement here. I will say, if we didn't get a chance to, to answer your question, I encourage folks to sign up for our Soul Squad. Um, there are ways you can engage there. Make sure you download the app, text the app to 30330. Um, there's just lots of great stuff here, Jen. I mean, we could literally be here all day, mm -hmm. but we won't be. <laughs> so our final question, uh, <laughs> Jen, our final question is about Arizona. Let's throw this question up there, guys. Let's throw it up there. For folks who don't know, Jen just loves Arizona. Okay, to any Arizonians out there, we are coming for votes. We want them. Jen O'Malley has made it her personal mission to ensure that we do well in your state. All right. This question is from Thomas in California. Thomas apparently also loves Arizona. Uh, Thomas said, I grew up in Arizona and have always known it as a kind of Republican state. So why are you all so bullish on it? Jen, tell the people. Okay, let me just talk about Arizona. It's like kind of funny that I keep doing this. Like I'm from Massachusetts. I've been to Arizona because I've been to 49 states. Thank you very much. I only have one left. Um, Where and have you not been? Arizona. Huh? Where's the state you haven't been? I haven't been to Idaho. Oh, well, we have to remedy that. So. I know. I know we do. Indeed. It's a weird one that I haven't been to, but I'm looking forward to it. I hear it's beautiful. Um, anyway, back to Arizona. Don't try to get me off my topic here. <laughs> so here's the thing about Arizona. For years, um, you know, I've been doing presidential campaigns for over 20 years. Uh, and in that time, we've talked about Arizona, that that was a state of the future, maybe. Um, we thought, you know what, maybe the demographics are, are trending, maybe it's possible. And so we would look at it. We looked at it in 08, we looked at it in 12, we looked at it in 16. And it just wasn't there yet. And so uh, as we saw what was happening in, in the trends where we have been moving more democratic in Arizona over the last several cycles, um, and then we're also seeing that for the first time in 2018, Maricopa County, where Phoenix is, large growing population, uh, voted, went blue for a federal candidate for the first time. So looking at the trends, Looking at what's happening in terms of 2018 on, and, and the trends within the administration since Trump's taken office and the strength of the vice president, um, I really feel like it is a perfect uh, ingredients to pull together uh, the campaign um, that will allow us to win in Arizona and to be a, tr a, a true battleground state. And I know that once that happens, then it's going to remain a battleground state. We need to do the work to reach the Latinx community that is critically important, not just to turn out, but also to persuade and bring people on as supporters. We need to do the work to make sure we're partnering with Mark Kelly and candidates down the ballot. Um, but the trends are heading in the right direction. And because of so much work that's been done uh, and so much foundation that's been laid, I, am, I just am so confident that we can compete 
compete and win for the first time in a presidential election. Um, so I, I think that just is going to continue to push this map. An aggressive, expansive map makes it much, much harder for Donald Trump to win. The more states that are in play, the more pathways we have to 270 votes, the more chance we will have to be in the White House next year. And that's what we're pushing for. And Arizona is high on my list. <laughs> well, you've made me a believer about Arizona. Whew. <sighs> I sure wish uh, Joe Biden was president right now, but I we know. are doing everything we can to get him to that White House as soon as possible. Well, Jen, those are all the questions that I have for you today. Uh, I'm going to give it to you to give the people some closing words. But again, just kudos on this, okay? <laughs> I'm very excited. Uh, I feel like I feel like I'm a grassroots supporter now. Like I don't know. I just I feel like I'm in the group. I'm gonna download the app. I'm gonna email and sign up for the Soul Squad. So thank you. I appreciate this. Well, Simone, I am so proud to be part of this campaign, but one of the best things has been able to get to work with you and get to know you and not have to just see you from afar but up close, although up close virtually basically now. But this has been so fun. Uh, let's promise, make a promise to the grassroots folks out there. We're going to do it again together. Because, yeah, Girl Scout Donna. Yes. All right. Uh, whatever that is. A organizer, <laughs> I swear, I promise. We don't break promises as organizers. So let me just say thank you to everyone. Um, you know, I, I honestly, as I was thinking about how do we talk about the strategy where we are in the campaign, I, you know, we said from the beginning, we wanted to make sure we're building a campaign that we're all part of. We want to be transparent about how we're thinking about this campaign and what we need to do to win. And so I want you to know how important each and every one of you are to that, how important you are to whether we win or lose. And it's not in big things that, you know, yes, of course, we want you to do as much as you possibly can. Yes, of course, we want you to take action. But even if you have one conversation, even if you remind that older brother of yours that maybe is a Republican, um, that he needs to really think about this, or maybe you see an ad and you think, you know what, um, that really is going to speak to someone I know that ha that's a Democrat that's going to probably vote, but isn't taking that extra effort um, to volunteer. But if you got that ad to that person, maybe that would change how they, they thought. It is going to be the big, but the small things this election. And at the end of the day, what I will say to you is what I say to the staff. Two things. Every I told you already, every Wednesday we do a staff meeting and we come together. At the end of that meeting, I say to everyone that we can do hard things. It's a small, simple thing. I say to myself sometimes as a mom uh, of three kids and juggling a lot, I need to remind myself that I can do it um, because we can, but also because we have to. And so at the end of the day, I want you to all know that we are in this together and that we look to you as part of our campaign team, as part of what we're building and your voice and your ideas and your creativity and your networks. Those are the things that are going to make us successful. We're going to build and we're going to have the resources and we're going to build the organization, but you are the ones that are going to make sure that we win on November 3rd. And at the end of the day, the only thing I'm going to ask you is what I ask of myself and what I ask of this team, which is to be able to look up at yourself in the mirror on November 4th, the day after that election. And if you can look in the mirror and you say that you have done every single thing that you possibly could help turn the around to help make sure that President Biden is elected, then that is all you can ask of yourself. That is all of us can ask of ourselves. I are hard. To, I know we are all impact by what's going on. And I know it's harder now than ever to do some of the things that you might have traditionally done. But now is the time that we all have to come together and community the work. This is really for all the marble. I am doing this because I believe in Joe Biden, but I have to answer my kids what I, I did help, help stop Trump from buying a country that still has to go. Um, and is a place for, for our kids and for ourselves and for future generations and for all of us now. And there is probably not going to be a more important time, a more important administration than the work on we all work together. So and when you're like, I, I just, I don't want to talk to that brother because he's just going to talk to me about Republican stuff. Remember what I said, you want to look in the mirror after that election and say you did it. And I got a guy to go vote and vote for Joe Biden because he saw the connection understood he loved that he shared values. He felt that he could unify this country. And if we can do that, if we can all get together, then we're going to win this thing and we're going to take
back what we know we can lead together, which is a great country building and built better future together. So thank you so much for being part of this with all of us. The vice president and Dr. Biden are just so proud to be in this with all of you. And I, and I can see you all. Soon. Thank you. Jen, thank you. Y'all over a year ago, marked on this journey to help restore the soul of the nation, rebuild the backbone and bring this country. And I'm so excited that we are closer and closer to that now than we've ever been. So Jen is going to help lead us through this, everybody. You know, Joe Biden, as you know, is the man for the job. And uh, she just fired me up. I, I don't know about the rest of y'all. I went to virtual church today, and I felt the need to grab my purse, join this live stream as she was just talking, and get some money out and donate and pass the collection plate because you fired me up, Jen. So thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Go to www.joebiden.com for more information to sign we need you. We want. Let's do this.